Hello everyone. Um, welcome to another live video, or if you're watching this after we've had our broadcast, welcome to the what was previously a live video but is now no longer a live video. Um, we're doing a demonstration of a picture of Ben Hall. Um, so the poll that we had for this particular one was between Ben Hall and Dan Morgan. Um, Morgan was leading at the start, but then Ben Hall caught up and took over. So we're doing Ben Hall. Um, the finished product will be the first prize for Fan Art February with the visual arts uh, part of the competition. And what I've done so far is I've taken the liberty of doing all the pencil lines first. I've softened them up so that I don't have any issues with the, the pen going over the top. And I'll put up um, the photograph I took of the original pencil line later. But um, all we're doing now is we're inking the picture that's already there. So I've got my pens out and uh, I suppose I'd better get started then, shouldn't I? So um, <clears throat> Obviously uh, Ben Hall looks a lot different to the Joe Byrne that we had last time. But uh, I think once he's done, he should look the part. In order to um, get a good idea of what Ben Hall's face looked like, over the, over the years I've sort of looked at uh, a bunch of different portraits, photographs, obviously, and then there was the, uh, the Samuel Calvert graving engraving, rather, um, that was done just after his untimely death in May of 1865, uh, which shows him with the big beard. Um, this one is obviously not with that full beard. This is more of a, a classic Ben Hall look with the kind of chin strap beard that um, he seemed to favour early on. Tails coming off from the, uh, the hat band as well. Now it's a bit windy out here. We're in Eltham at the moment, and I thought it would be nice to come outside while the sun's out. So you might get a bit of wind in the microphone. I hope that um, some of you have seen the, the finished product from last night of Joe Byrne. Um, that will be the prize for the literature part of the Fan Art February competition. So as I've said previously, in order to enter the competition you just need to send your submission to australianbushranging at gmail.com and we have a number of things that will come out in the price pack but um, for first place you get these original pieces of artwork now people who have seen The Legend of Ben Hall will picture Ben Hall wearing the long coat with the big um, lapels and that's not what I'm going with here. What I'm going with here is the sack coat which was very popular at the time. They, back in the 1860s, had very small tight collars as opposed to the big lapels and they typically only did up the top button so that it sort of came away. We've got an ambulance driving in the background. Add a bit of ambiance. Ambulance, ambiance. Anyway. Um, so yeah, if you look at a lot of the old engravings, you'll see the bush rangers are typically drawn with these kinds of coats because they were very lightweight 
and short and they didn't get in the way and by only doing the top button up it gave them easy access to their revolvers. So uh, speaking of revolvers I've drawn Ben Hall with a pocket Colt which is essentially the same as the gun that we had Joe Byrne holding in the picture from last night but it's a smaller version of it and it takes a smaller bullet. Have we got anyone viewing at the moment? No? That's alright. We have three before, but now is it? I suppose. It's hard when it's during the day, I suppose. That's right. But people can tune in later and catch up on what we've been doing. That's the wonder of the internet. So as with the last one that I did, I start with the outline and then I'll fill that in later. Um, I won't do the whole process on video because what time did I start it last night? It was about 8 o'clock I started it. Now I didn't finish it till probably about half past 11. So I don't think anyone wants to sit and watch for that length of time. That's quite a long time to be watching someone waffling on and drawing pictures. So. We'll keep this one quite brief. But if you do have any questions, feel free to pop them in the, the comments section below. And uh, if they come through while we're live, I'll answer them. If not, I'll answer them afterwards. So there's a number of bush rangers that um, make for good subject matter when you're drawing, and Ben Hall is one of them. He's good because there's plenty of reference images of him, but also there's something very uh, aesthetically pleasing about his style and his look. So it makes it very easy to want to draw pictures of him. Uh, same with Daniel Morgan, I suppose. Um, Morgan, you can get some really interesting looking stuff because he's got that really dramatic looking beard and hair going on. Whereas Ben Hall's much more of a sober looking character. He looks more like a dandy bushman than a bush ranger. So, just filling in few of the uh, creases and stuff in the sleeve. Alright, so I'm going to swap my pen over now to go with this one, which is the graphic one that I was using yesterday for the face, because I have a bit more control over it this way. So hopefully when I've uh, finished this you can compare the finished product to any of the photographs that we have of Ben Hall and go, oh yeah, that looks about right. He had, um, it was described as having a hooked nose, but he didn't really have much of a hooked nose. It was just kind of aquiline, which, you know. A bit like Joe's. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Joe's came more sort of out and pointy, whereas um, Ben Hall had more of a sort of hawk 
nose, I suppose you could say, um, with arched nostrils. The, one of the most uh, interesting things about Ben Hall's face is that he seems to have had um, a slight defect in his cheek muscles because his the right side of his mouth is always in a slight smile and that was something that was commented upon um, when people were looking at his body after he was shot um, that he seemed to be having a half smile even though he was in death we've just had a question who is drawing uh, me Aidan Phelan I'm the uh, artist but I'm also the person who writes and researches and everything for a guide to Australian bush ranging. So all of the posts that you see on this Facebook page or on the Instagram account, uh, all of the articles that go up on WordPress, they're the ones that I've put together. So, um, hello. Um, the other thing I like to do is drawing. So some of the articles will have uh, illustrations that I've done. Especially if their um, subject matter is something that doesn't have many illustrations, um, historically speaking. So there's actually, um, there was an article that I did um, last year about um, the first raid that the Hall Gang did in uh, Canoundra and I did all the illustrations for that because there weren't any contemporary illustrations that I could find depicting <coughs> the gang. Oh, you're right there? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, the, the wind's got some bones in it. So, yeah, I've had a bit of experience drawing Ben Hall and his gang members. Another thing about um, Ben Hall's style is the hat that he's wearing here. Um, I'm going to be doing it as a cabbage tree hat, which was the most popular style at the time. Um, but in terms of the way the, the hat's shaped, it's the same as a lot of the felt hats from the time. And if you watch The Legend of Ben Hall, you'll see that, sh that shape, that style, um, is represented by felt hats rather than uh, any straw hats or um, cabbage tree hats because it's very hard to find a good looking and uh, well made cabbage tree hat nowadays even though back in the 1860s they were the most popular form of headgear in Australia. Um, they were made from the fronds of a cabbage tree plant. They would be um, flattened and dried out and bleached and then once they, uh, the fronds had been dried out and everything, they could braid them into strips and then they could stitch the strips together and make a hat. So anyone with basic uh, abilities in terms of plaiting and things like that was able to make their own hat. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of those old um, skills have been lost over the years as people have not had to rely on doing things for themselves as much, but um, that's life, I suppose. So, that should be enough to sort of get started. I'll turn it around so you can have a look. So I'll work a bit on um, on the hat and the hair. Um, do. So I've got the light sort of coming in from that direction, so there's more shade on this side. The good thing about doing it this way is that you can work in a lot of texture. 
So once I've done the initial uh, shading, then I'll add the texture to show that it's a cabbage tree hat. Those hats have a really interesting kind of um, zigzaggy type texture from the way that they're um, braided and stuff. So it will look rather interesting once it's done. But as I said, I won't make you sit through the whole process. I'll keep it fairly brief because, yeah, an illustration like this takes time. Leanne Brown says that it looks great. Oh, thank you very much, Leanne. So again, if you want the chance to win this particular piece of artwork, um, it's for the visual art component of the Fan Art February competition. So for that, the only sort of, um, I guess, restriction is that it has to be some form of visual art. So that means drawings, paintings, um, photography, um, it could be costume design, it could be cake decorating, it can be anything really. But the prompt is, uh, you know, your favourite Bush Ranger story. So if your favourite story is um, the Siege of Glen Rowan, we want something visual that shows what you like about that particular Bush Ranger story. Um, and the whole purpose of Fan Art February is just to get people involved and creative and, uh, you know, have a, a way of expressing their, their fascination with the history and their, their interest in the subject matters. So, you know, it's not about being an amazing, groundbreaking artist. It's just about expressing your passion for the subject. And that, I think, is probably a little bit more important because these stories belong to all of us and they're a part of our history. And the more that we kind of engage with it and the more we, you know, do stuff with it, the better it becomes because then we can share that with other people. See, for me, when I first got into bush rangers I was what, 12, 12 years old thereabouts um, and I've always loved drawing but the big thing for me was um, it was really fun to draw Ned Kelly in his armour and so that was one of the things that um, I would do a lot of and when I was in high school that would be oftentimes what I'd do instead of my schoolwork which got me into trouble, but that's okay. I eventually did my school work and obviously I passed. But um, for me, doing stuff like this, it just gets the, the grey matter working and it can be quite relaxing as well. And that's the thing, like people, Oftentimes they'll look at doing artwork and they'll say, oh, I can't draw, or oh, I can only do stick figures. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be Van Gogh or Picasso. It just has to be something that expresses what you want to express in a way that makes you feel good. Alright, so... See, it's got a little bit of texture in it. So, what I'll do is I'll get rid of those pencil lines now because we don't need them. That clears it up a bit.
So it's a lovely Friday afternoon now, and I'm sure a lot of people are sitting there at work, watching the clock, wondering when they're going to get home. Maybe they're going out this weekend to have a party. Or maybe, just maybe, they'll be heading down to greet her tomorrow where there is an event on at the Hansonville Hall about the Kelly Gang armour. Now I know I'll be there and George who's behind the camera here will be there and uh, I reckon it'll be a good event. I think I'll uh, probably do a bit of coverage of it for a guide to Australian bush ranging. What do we reckon? Sounds like a good idea I think. went to the one last year um, celebrating the anniversary of Max Brown's book Australian Sun and it was very entertaining seeing all the speeches and everything and I think this year will probably be even better. Um, the committee up there have been working really really hard to get it all going and get it together so I reckon we'll have a, a really good day tomorrow. Um, if you can't get up there and it's unfortunate but you know these things happen and hopefully you can live vicariously through my coverage of it we'll see how we go but it's always good to get out into to Kelly country and um, I think the weather will probably hold out which will be good certainly makes a difference with these uh, cooler temperatures here compared to what we had a couple of weeks ago So what I'm doing here with the hair is trying to give it that wavy look because Ben Hall had quite wavy hair. You can see, oh, that's a nice light, you can see that just each individual line gives you the impression of the texture and the waviness and everything. It gives it a bit of volume to add a bit of shadow as well. One of the reasons that uh, Ben Hall would have had his hair long is because that was uh, the popular style at the time. Um, but specifically for the men who were born in Australia, um, it was their way of sort of identifying themselves as colonials, as being sort of distinct from their parents who were either uh, migrants or uh, convicts and the longer your hair was I believe the uh, the cooler you looked so to speak um, which isn't actually too far removed from how it was back in the 1960s I guess I don't know how long we've been going for so far. Any ideas? Uh, no. no. It's one in six now. Okay. Maybe 40 minutes, half an hour. Hmm. Well, I reckon uh, if we go for another 20 minutes, that should be plenty of time. I won't get this whole thing done in that time, but I reckon uh, that'll be enough to get the, the face finished, and that'll be uh, the bit that most people are probably interested in looking at. Unless they've got a particular interest in seeing how I can fill in the jacket.
Do you have a favourite bushranger you like to draw? Um, it used to be Ned Kelly, but um, I don't know actually. I enjoy drawing all of them for different reasons. Um, I enjoy drawing Dan Morgan because you can be really dramatic with it. Um, I enjoy drawing Ben Hall because he's got a very unique look um, and you know he's got a handsome face so it makes it a bit easier to look at. Um, but I think any of the members of the Kelly gang are always going to be interesting because we've got so many visual records of how they looked and what they wore and of course there's the armour which is always fascinating to look at and to draw. I mean, it's fascinated artists for over a century, so there's something to that. But um, I don't know, it just kind of depends on what mood I'm in. I mean, uh, you know, I quite enjoy um, trying to learn the, uh, the costumes and the weapons and stuff for some of the older bushrangers like Matthew Brady because it's so far removed from everything else that we sort of recognise now. I mean, can you imagine um, a bushranger running around through the middle of Tasmania dressed as Mr Darcy from Pride and Prejudice? Uh, that's, that's how they would have looked. Now I know that um, there's quite a few Ben Hall descendants out there that are probably keen to see how uh, this one turns out. So I hope they prove of um, how this ends up looking because if they can look at it and go, oh yeah, he looks like a Hall, then I've done my job, haven't I?
many people watching at the moment? Two. Two, that's all right. Two is more than one, and one is more than none. <laughs> yeah. As we've seen in uh, bush ranging history, two is more than enough to cause trouble. So, thank you to everyone who's watching or has been watching. Hopefully, this is uh, an interesting process for you to see. Sun's coming out. Mm. Mm. All right, so let's have a look there. What do you reckon so far? Oh, I, I reckon it looks great. That's what I was hoping you'd say. I don't think I've ever seen a bad drawing from you, Aiden. Uh, that's because you only see the good ones. What sort of shirts did a bush ranger like to wear? Do you know? Yeah, not the Crimean ones. The Crimean shirts. I just know that because of Joe. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were very popular all throughout the 1800s, really. Um, they were called the Crimean shirt because it was favoured by troops that fought in the Crimean War. Oh, okay. Um, they didn't button all the way up and down. Um, they were almost like a smock, a little bit like a smock or a caftan or something like that. Um, big puffy sleeves, but um, the bush rangers preferred the ones with uh, the bright colours and the, the patterns. So you'd often see them wearing, you know, bright reds or um, polka dots or stripes, that kind of thing. Very bold, very flashy. Um, we know that uh, Johnny Gilbert was a very flash cove, so he would have had something very bright indeed. Um, ben Hall was always much more soberly dressed though, so he probably favoured darker colours. It's interesting that uh, Ben Hall was clearly the, the leader of the gang for the, the last sort of couple of years at least. But he never really seemed to lead from the front. He always sort of hung back and blended into the environment a little bit. Um, you know, he was a bush ranger, but it was almost like he didn't want to be one. Um, and yet, he clearly did because he gave up a, a life as a respectable stockman to become one with little to no provocation. So it makes him a very odd and complex character in the history of bush ranging because it's not so clear cut as to why he did what he did. You know, Ned Kelly, you know, at the very least, he claimed that he was being persecuted and that was the the motivator for him to act out. But you know, the the Gilbert Hall gang was kind of just there for the fun of it. And they certainly did seem to have a lot of fun when they were bailing up entire towns and making fools out of the police. So, you know, it makes it some fascinating reading. So, I reckon that for now, for this video, that's probably where I'm going to leave it. to 
having pretty much a completed face and head. So I think that's turning out alright so far, but I will put out the, uh, the finished product once it's done, which hopefully will be sometime tonight, but more than likely probably in the morning before we head out to greet her. So, you know, thank you to everyone who's been watching. Um, hopefully some of you decide that you're going to go into the Fan Art February competition and hopefully someone will be taking this home, well, not taking it home, but, you know, will be having it as their prize. Um, so email your submissions to australianbushranging at gmail.com and you'll go in the running to get one of these original pieces of artwork. Alright, thank you very much.